United States Air Force Academy cadets do this every day and up to a dozen times on weekends. You'll see them bundle up their chutes as soon as they land and gather around the critiquer to learn what they did right or wrong. And then you'll see some of them getting back in line ready for another jump. For all cadets here, Academic work and military duties come first, of course. After all, this is an institution of higher learning and a preparation for an Air Force career. But during his four academy years, a cadet still finds plenty of chances to get up in the blue skies of Colorado. Maybe he'll just go up a little ways at first in a parasail. A little bit higher next time in a hot air balloon. Then he'll take wing in a sailplane, soaring lazily on the thermal currents around Pikes Peak. What's more logical at the Air Force Academy than the study and practice of airmanship in all forms? This is really a flying classroom. Cadets studying navigation receive academic credit for this aspect of the airmanship training program at the academy. Academic training five or six miles high. Sir, what's my problem with my memory line? Right now you're not getting your most accurate drift angle and ground speed, but you do have a radar position. So we'll update your computer using your radar position. Do you know how to do that? Yes, sir. What do you have for coordinates? Sir, I got north latitude, 38 degrees, 49 minutes, west longitude, 104 degrees, 43 minutes. Sounds real good. Go ahead and update your computer. While at the Air Force Academy, each cadet receives some type of flight orientation training. This is the T-43 Jet Navigator Trainer. Our normal operating envelope is 31,000 to 35,000 feet. On board this airplane, we have two onboard computers, we have a radar system, various radio aids. And last but not least, we have basic celestial training. A logical extension of this navigation instruction is an opportunity for cadets to get to know about the real, everyday Air Force. Here, a group of navigation trainees visits Luke Air Force Base in Arizona. As a group, they'll get practical briefings on the mission of the base. Here it is, the F-15, and it's likely that some of them will be flying it one day. Regardless of the base visited, the cadets get a close-up practical view of what the future holds for them 
in their Air Force career. How do I get my client? Back at the academy, the T-37 trainer provides another dimension to the total airmanship program. This is a real hands-on approach to developing an understanding of what flying's all about. Excellent instruction and prime equipment shape the attitudes and knowledge of tomorrow's leaders. You need to pay more attention to your attitude indicator and less attention to your vertical velocity indicator. All in all, though, you're doing fairly well for your second ride, and I think that you'll be doing okay once you get to UPT. Thanks. I won't get to UPT. I won't get a chance to fly in the regular Air Force. Even though flying's not the only thing to come to the academy for, it's still the most important thing at the, in the Air Force itself. So training like this in the aviation programs here at the academy gives guys like me who will go into support fields a better appreciation of what goes on in the cockpit. But you will get up in the air. And it's a real kick in the you-know-what. Parasailing. This is usually a duly summer experience. I want you to continue it's a real thrill, although a very short ride. Okay. The, the instructors are excellent, and the ride almost to too short. Okay. Clear the area. Canopy ready. Canopy ready. Canopy up. feet in the air. A Dooley's eye view of Parasailville. Okay, I want you to assume the proper PLS position. Put your feet and knees together. Keep your eyes on the rod. Elbows in. Keep your eyes on the rod. Okay, now you're going to go to the right. Here's another way to get towed off the ground, but considerably more involved. The Academy has a fleet of sailplanes. And on busy days, the sky seems to be filled with them. What? With three tow planes working, one of these beauties can be launched every three minutes. There are competitive sailplane meets to stimulate those who wish to continue with sailplaning. And if the cadet wants to pursue the sport even further, he can gain a private, commercial, or instructor pilot license. In fact, all the instructors here are cadets who voluntarily gone the full course and obtained their FAA certification. Belts on ice, can be secure, ready for hookup? You're ready for hookup. Open. Open. That's eavesdrop on the cadet instructor on this flight as he works with a cadet on one of his very early flights in summer training. We wiggle our rudder panels, and he'll wiggle his, and then we'll take off down the runway. As his tail wheel comes off, we lift off and stay right above the runway. Ready for him to climb out, and when he does, we follow him up. Now we'll climb up and stay right behind him. Okay, it's time to release. Check low and left, high and right, okay? Okay, we're clear. Start a climbing turn to the right. Tow plane makes a diving turn to the left so no one gets tangled up. Make sure that you're clearing at all times. Keep your head moving around, that's it. 52 miles an hour, that's good right there. You're doing all right. Watch your yaw string, watch your nose. Oh, it's great, it's great. It's like nothing I've ever done before. You don't have an engine and uh, you're flying like a bird, I guess. All you can hear is just the, the rushing air over the wings. That's, a, that's really a neat thing to think about, you know, you're flying like a bird. Okay, your bank is too high and you overshot. Your nose is too low and your speed's climbing. Fly the plane. Don't let the plane fly you. We keep our speed up and our position by using spoilers to slow us down. And nose position. 
Down for faster, up for slower. Hold about 57. Keep those wings level. Watch your aim point. About 10 feet above ground, you level out and start bleeding off airspeed. Just about there. Nice. Slow, touch down easy. Keep your nose up and back pressure. Then apply the brake. Try to keep the nose up as long as possible. Okay, let the skid hit. Roll to a stop. Radio off, and then you get out so you can help push. For those who prefer powered flight, make sure the, proper the Academy Aero Club and offers a chance to work sure toward a private pilot's license. Have in there the need to be replaced. The position light, the induction system, the opposite side of the propeller, and again, the opposite side of the main cowling for any fasteners that I might be missing, and for our oil quantity and the proper mount. Although this is not a scheduled activity, the Academy shares the expense of civilian aircraft and instructors for those cadets who participate. Some go on to get an instrument rating. A few even go further to an FAA flight instructor certificate. Balloon Club is another flying experience available to cadets. It's strictly a volunteer spare time thing. We got three of these beauties, and if you like to get up early in the morning, well, you'll fit in just fine. We work early because you can't have very much wind to launch, so just after dawn is the best time. You're really at the mercy of the air currents as far as where you go, but you can maneuver up and down, and this way you can find winds that will take you in uh, lots of different directions. It's a totally new experience. We think it's great. One of the programs that enjoys a great number of participants is parachuting. Top qualified instructors guide the trainees through a rigorous training routine. On the cadet's first jump, it's uh, like anyone on their first jump. It's, it's an alien environment. It's not a hostile environment, it's an alien environment. And until they make that first jump, they're really not too sure what's out there besides some air. You have everything from nonchalance and extreme confidence in their ability to total shock. Heck, I can't explain it because I don't really remember what happened when I was up there now. Like... Well, I was second out of the aircraft. It was really kind of scary watching him go away and thinking I was next. Well, the big difference I found was, of course, you are a much higher excitement level. And... They train us so well, you just sort of, sort of in second nature, you really don't remember too much what happened up there. Get ready through uh, this course I've observed the cadets through their 16 hours of training age phase which is probably one of the most difficult anywhere in the world they have to reach a level of almost absolute perfection in the ground training or training age phase before they go into their aerial phase of training last year they started having a women into the academy the summer is the first time that they've had the opportunity to get into the parachuting course the one we have this period, we have three of them this summer, one, one each period, and uh, she's doing extremely well. It's just one of the things that the Air Force has to offer. There's a lot of things that it does offer, and while I'm here, I'd like to try everything I can. The okay, most common thing for most people is they get a little apprehensive and they dive down off the tower. Okay, they look at the ground, oh my God, they go down. Okay, all you want to do is rotate out, get your head back as far as you can. Look up at Pike's Peak up there, okay? Get ready. Go! 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, art thousand, root thousand, root thousand, tall thousand, weight thousand, check thousand. 
looks good. The jerk is pretty much the same. It's I probably don't even notice it. <laughs> Thinking about other things once you come down. First jump, right? Yeah. Okay. How many jumps take you to clear up the tower? Four. Four? All right. That's not too bad. You'll be all right. Just like jumping off the tower, all you got to do is remember, get a good vigorous exit and hit that arch as soon as you can, okay? I sprang out really hard and I went to an arch and uh, I could see the plane uh, flying away just like they told us and I kept counting. Oh, wow. That parachute's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Boy. Boy, that was neat. Come on now. There are the red lines. Let's see if this thing will turn. Yeah. Hey, that works just like they said it would. Training aids helped a whole lot. It, it didn't seem like anything uh, was that surprising because it was just like they told us. It's just like we had practiced, you know, opening the whole thing. Oh, come on. It, it's fantastic. I sure hope this is soft. Here it comes. Oh, get your feet and knees together. Oh. Those who really dig parachuting can pursue the advanced form of parachuting called skydiving. In fact, the Air Force Academy parachute team has been consistently first in intercollegiate competition over the past decade. These advanced students also work as jump masters in the training of beginning parachutes. Dion and I had the two man right out the door and just held it stable. And before we knew it, Don was, had flown in. He exited fourth. Don flew in. We had the three man and uh, saw Chuck. He got big, came up, and flew in and got into the four man. We had it about 5,000 feet. Held it and broke out. intense of all the airmanship programs. Pilot indoctrination. The T-41 is the bird. It's a military version of the Cessna 172. All cadets who have qualified for Air Force pilot training learn to fly this airplane in their senior year. It's a firm first step for the all-jet training they'll receive when they graduate from the academy. Well, today's the day that you'll be taking your solo mission. Are you prepared? Have you read Flightline T-41, chapter on patterns and landings? Yes, sir, I'm ready. Okay. First of all, we'll go out to the northern area, and we'll practice traffic pattern stalls, slow flight, and forced landings to make sure you're proficient in those maneuvers before we come back. Yes, sir. And then we'll come on back to the pattern, and we'll fly two touch and goes, a go around and a full stop on the dual portion. And then I'll get out of the airplane, and you'll repeat that for your solo portion. But only go around if you feel a requirement is necessary. first couple of flights, you hear the instructor's voice constantly telling you to watch your airspeed, watch your angle, bank, watch your pitch attitude, the landmarks you're looking for, and so on. Well, I'm finding that military flying is a lot more precise than civilian flying. You have to maintain your airspeed exactly, your altitude exactly, and they do this because eventually we're going to be flying the big jets, which are a lot different from flying a little airplane. Keep the bank angle precisely at 30 and the airspeed precisely at 95 during the there is an immense amount of knowledge to know. You know, I always thought flying was simple. It looked so easy watching it from the ground. And then when I started flying, there was just so much to know. But then after I'm flying for a while, it seems very simple. This is the big moment for the student pilot. Stomach does flip-flops when your instructor pilot tells you to stop and let him out. 
The bravado of a thumbs-up signal means I can handle it, sir. You've seen cars on the street with a sign, driver training? Well, here at the Academy, when the left wing landing light is on, that means it's the pilot's first solo. The first time that I realized I was solo was when the main wheels finally got it off the ground on a takeoff roll. I looked over the right seat and I could see there was no instructor there. But by this time, I knew I didn't need him. I had enough training, and I knew what I was doing. And I was concentrating on having a good time. And I couldn't believe how much fun it was being up there all by myself, finally. Then it was time for the full stop landing. Again, I tried to do everything right, and everything was on fine, airspeed and altitude. I knew my instructor was sitting out in mobile watching me and I wanted to make a good landing because he had put so much effort into training me. I brought from base to final and lined up on runway and I watched my airspeed. I finally came down to the flare and I held it off and it was a nice touchdown. Hey, that's pretty good. Is that your student? Sure is. He's not doing too bad. I had finally sold. I had sold my first Air Force airplane. It was just a fantastic feeling. I just can't describe it. I just want to go up for some more. The Academy Airmanship Program is, on balance, a program for everyone. For the parachutist, an excitement that only the participant can know. The sailplane enthusiast will tell you that it's a world apart. The balloonist finds the serenity and the silent drifting with air currents is a challenge to the caprice of nature. The demands of the navigation experience. The informality of the aero club. The excitement of that first parasail ride. And the practical demands of T-41 instruction blend into a program designed to make the Air Force Academy cadet ready for the challenge of the future. Gentlemen, you are the best. Air Force Academy Airmanship Training, a program that puts Falcon on the wing.